and Trish at breakfast. We are BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. It's lovely to have your company. Monday the 24th of August, Pete and Trish at breakfast uh, for the week. Shane is away. Now, it may come as a, no surprise to those of you who've had to nav- navigate Toll Bar Island recently, like me. Uh, but Coventry, along with North Staffordshire, saw the biggest increase in congestion in the UK last year. Mm, so this is all according to a new study. Shows that congestion rose in the area by more than 30% drivers spending 28 hours sitting in traffic up 7 hours from 2013. Let's speak to Greg Holsworth. It's from the analyst Inrix which produces the traffic scorecard. Greg, good morning. Hi, good morning to you. Um, so uh, explain the, the, the this study. What was it you were looking at? What were the, the parameters you were going with here? Well, we collect GPS data from uh, many, many uh, fleet management companies. So you probably, if you've ever watched that Eddie Stobart program on the TV, yeah. you think they're all managed uh, by controllers in offices who know exactly where all these trucks are every minute of the day. Um, their, their byproduct, if you like, is all this data which shows where vehicles were at what time. And we can use that data to work out what the speeds were on the roads up and down the country. So we just crunch all the numbers see what the average speeds look like at peak times. Uh, we can compare this with the data we've got back going over many, many years. Uh, and as you say, Coventry has seen quite a remarkable, in UK standards, quite a remarkable increase year on year. And uh, such as it's now one of the top ten worst for congestion in the country. It, it wasn't in the top ten list last year, but it, it's made that appearance for the first time this year. Mm. And is there any indication as to what's caused the rise? It, in, within the figures itself, it, it obviously, they're just raw numbers. They don't, they don't give any reasons why. Uh, but we know from looking into other data that we have, because we're collecting road incidents uh, as well to go alongside this, um, Coventry has really, as Trish mentioned, that the famous Toll Bar Island yeah. really is up there as one of the worst sets of roadworks in the country. And it, it's really been... Uh, uh, multiple sets of roadworks, because as well as that one, you've had the, the works on the ring road by the railway station, uh, you've had the Whitley Island, other sets of minor works around the place as well. These all interact and, and cause the bottlenecks that you already have in, in the peak times to become much worse, and, and we think that's what's causing this unusual rise. Mm, yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. I mean, there isn't a route into Coventry that isn't affected um, by the roadworks. So, I, going off that, that should say that going forward from here, as these projects finish and as the roadworks come off, those figures should drop again. We'd hope so. I mean, that is the purpose of doing all these works, to relieve bottlenecks, because the, the Toll Bar Island, obviously, you've got two very major roads crossing. You've got the A45 running east-west and the A46 running north-south. Uh, the object of the exercise there is to take one road above the island so that that's not impeded by any signals or anything and in- improves the through traffic there so it is, it's one of those things like you, you talk about the short term pain for the long term gain, what we hope is that long term what was a big bottleneck on the edge of Coventry will in future run much more smoothly but of course you've had to put up with the pain of that, it feels yeah. like it's been going on forever doesn't it, it feels it, like it's been there for years Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it, it, it almost it, it's got to the point now where it just feels like the norm the, yeah, the, you know, that's, these, that's right, but you know, uh, once, it, once it is all done, it will feel so much better, and uh, something to, to maybe, so, uh, if you can take one positive out of this, that, that is the, the benefit that we'll feel in the years to come. And, well, and the only other thing that, come, that comes out of this is, is looking at these is, because the numbers are going up, b- uh, us as commuters, as drivers, we seem quite, as much as we'll moan, we seem quite happy to sit in it. We seem quite happy to... to to be part of the congestion rather than looking for alternative ways. Well, yes, I mean, the onus is rather on employers, I think, to be more creative in terms of working hours. I mean, the, the, the idea that to be at work you have to be sat behind a desk from nine to five, five days a week, is it, probably something that was from the last century rather than the 21st century. Uh, I mean, I'm actually working from home today, so I'm not contributing to the traffic this morning. Um, and it, it's a kind of also a byproduct of a good news story making a bad news story, because the good news is that what's causing the underlying rise in congestion is the improving economy in the UK. As it improves, there's more people in work, so there's more people commuting, uh, there's more people with money in their pockets to go out and spend at the shops, uh, and a very modern thing is, is all these little vans buzzing around the, the domestic 
streets delivering shopping and, and parcels that we never used to have 10 and 20 years ago. That, that's a very new modern factor going into the mix. Yeah. Greg, thanks very much. Greg Holdsworth uh, from Inrix, which produces the traffic scorecard. No surprise uh, showing that uh, Coventry and congestion have been going hand in hand and in bigger and bigger numbers uh, over the past few years. 14 minutes to 8. 